My name's Keith Cooper of Northlight Images. This is the Epson P 5300 printer, uh, P 5370 in the US, 5360, various numbers, but basically the P 5300. Uh, I'm going to be doing a load of videos looking at different aspects of this that will supplement a detailed review in due course. But I'm covering specific printing aspects. This time I'm having a look at printing on canvas. Now, this is a roll canvas. You could use sheet canvas as well. But with roll canvas, um, I've loaded up a 17 inch roll of canvas in the back here. Now, this is an ANOVA canvas, IFA 35. It's a matte canvas. It's quite a light canvas. Now, there are canvas media settings on the printer here. There's satin canvas, matte canvas. Now, I've made printer profiles for this particular canvas. Interestingly enough, when I tried printing the test target that you do to make a, a profile, when I tried printing that using either of the canvas settings, I got too much ink on the canvas. So the ink run just a little bit. You could just see a little bit of loss of detail on it from over inking. Now this is something you'll need to check with different types of media. I've decided to use this one partly because I've got a roll of the stuff. Um, I don't print canvas very often myself but also because I've used it I've made a custom media setting. Now I will be coming back to this in the review. May well do a, a video about it but effectively I've tried printing that target with several different media settings and I found that if I used the double weight matte uh, setting I got a reasonable amount of ink on the setting. So what I've done is I've taken that double weight matte setting created using the Epson Media installer. I created a custom media that on this printer is called IFA 35 brackets DWM. Uh, the brackets DWM is just to tell me that it's based on the double weight matte uh, media setting. Do you need to do this? Not necessarily. On some canvases you would be able to print using the satin or the matte media setting. Would print just fine. And that's what it's there for. But do remember if you're trying something else you may need a custom setting to get the best results from it. Now I found this out, I've got a P5000 upstairs, different ink set, same chassis, but different ink set, different print head on it. And that also needed a bit of adjustment on it. So it would suggest that this lightweight canvas really doesn't take large amounts of ink. It's a matte canvas, but you know, you might use it. You might well use it, stretch it, then varnish it afterwards so that it wouldn't really matter. You'd still get good results from it. But anyway, I've loaded it up, normal loading procedure for uh, roll media here. It tells me that the roll is 432 millimeters. It's a 17 inch roll, but it's always handy this size here in case you need to do exact settings. Now, I'm going to cut the canvas here with the cutter on the printer. If you are going to be doing a lot of canvas printing, I would seriously advise not to use the built-in cutter all the time. So if you're going to be producing dozens of canvas prints a day or more on a printer like this, get a separate cutter. The cutter blade is meant for paper. It will wear out eventually. Now, I've never had to replace the cutter blade on the P5000 I've got after several years of use. If I was printing canvas all the while, not only might the cutter wear out, but it puts extra wear on other parts of the printer. It is simply not designed for it. So don't be a cheapskate and just assume that you can use the printer cutter. Occasionally, yes, I have no problem with that. But if I was printing a lot of canvas, I would not use the built-in cutter. Uh, it's just not meant for that heavy duty use. It's meant for paper. Anyway, I'm going to print an image. I'm going to use Epson Print Layout. Now, Epson Print Layout, just because it's easy, it's the same on PC, it's based on same on Windows, uh, PC and Mac. And also, it offers canvas wrap options. And that's what I'll have a look at. Now, I'm going to print an image and I'm going to extend it so that it could be wrapped over a canvas stretcher. 
and um, it's going to be used for that. Now, I've not got a stretch of the right size for this, so I'm not going to show that aspect for it, but if you're into canvas printing, you should know that sort of stuff. If you don't, find out. There's lots of stuff about how to mount and frame canvas and stretch them. But I'm going to use Epson Print Layout. Let's have a look at the settings. Now, I've opened up the image in Epson Print Layout. I said I could either as I have here, import it directly from Photoshop, or I could use this as a standalone application. It's entirely up to you. You can use other software for editing your images. The image itself is a view of a cornfield and a tree and a wind pump taken when I was driving across uh, one of the flat bits of Oregon one day uh, a few years ago. Now, if I look at the settings, media type, as I said, it's IFA 35 DWM. That will not be on your printer. That's one that I've created. I could, of course, just use the double weight mat, but by doing this, it reminds me of the settings and that it's a special one. It's one of the reasons you might consider using, um, using actual settings that you've created yourself and installed. I've set it to roll paper borderless auto expand because, uh, well, it handles it okay and it means I don't have any little white borders down the edge of the paper. I may still need to trim the front and uh, trailing edge of the media, but doesn't really matter. Quality, well, just set for ordinary quality. This is canvas, doesn't matter. I don't want to go for high quality particularly. The important bit is that I've set gallery wrap under the layout settings, the type. Now, the roll paper width is set for the standard uh, roll paper that I've got here, 17 inch, or as near as you've got it here. Now, I've set the canvas size, which is the size of the actual print itself, plus you've got the actual overlap. I've set that at 13 inch by 20 inch. Now, 13 inch width means that on a 17 inch paper, I've got plenty of space on either side of it to give me an overlap. Now, the overlap, the amount that you want on it, I've set at 1.77 inch. That happens to be a standard on this. You can adjust these things. And I'm using the mirror image soft focus for the extension of the image. Now, there is an option where I can actually wrap the image and use soft focus. That, however, uses part of the image extended over the edge. It all depends on what your source image looks like as to whether you want it extending over the edge. If you're using, a, say, um, a gallery wrap for this, so you, you wrap this over a stretcher uh, and the sides are visible in this instance. If I was printing on canvas, otherwise for larger prints, it purely depends how I'm going to mount it, whether I'm going to frame it or do what. Lots of different options for canvas, but here you can see you've got two basic options and you can change it. You can change the blur as well. Now under ICC profiles, I've also selected my profile and the profile is P5300 IFA35-DWM. That tells me what the media setting is that's being used. And I've set it, it, the profile was made for high quality, but we don't really need that. Quality output will do. It's fine enough for canvas. So I've got everything set here. I'm happy with that. So I can just press print. Now it's gonna take a little while for the printer, to, for the computer to do its stuff, send the data here. And uh, when it does send it, uh, this will start flashing and then the fans will start up. And um, hopefully I should get a print to show you fairly quickly. Well, the fans are starting up. Um, I should notice that um, I tried printing this. Uh, the setting I had was uh, borderless, um, auto expand to save getting the white line down it. He didn't like it for some reason. Now, whether that's a configuration issue on my Mac or something else like that, but just goes to show that with these sort of things, you sometimes have to experiment a bit to find things that work. Uh, the only difference between this and what I set up just now is that the print may have a little white line down the edge of one, the side. And uh, I should be able to see if I have a look. Yeah, a few millimeters margin. Now that could well be because I'm using the DWM uh, media setting, the double weight mat rather than a canvas setting. Um, like all of these things, the first time you try stuff, 
have a look very carefully at all the settings you're using. If need be, note them down or something like that, because quite often there is a particular set of set settings which work better, and this goes for all roll printing I've found, um, that allowing for sizes and various other stuff. Anyway, it is printing. It tells me uh, that I have another five minutes to go and the print will be done. So we'll just see what comes out. If you're curious, I prefer to leave in mistakes and errors as long as I don't completely mess something up uh, when I'm doing these videos purely so that you can see the complexity that's involved, the care that's needed sometimes and the fact that even with years of experience of using different printers it's possible to get stuff that doesn't work first time um, and that's important to remember. If it doesn't work first time have a look at what your settings, what can you alter? Um, it's one of the reasons I almost never ever do step-by-step -step guides in videos or e even in my written articles. I do not do step-by-step -step stuff because it's usually so specific to a certain system. I'm using an old Mac here, so if you're using a new Windows system, I've no idea what your displays look like, what your printer, dis your printer interface looks like. You have to learn that stuff yourself. I always prefer to teach the principles involved rather than, as I say, a step-by-step. -step. It's principles rather than a recipe. Um, but I can see that the print's coming out nicely. Um, yeah, looks okay. Print's well on its way. It's now printing a bit of the cornfield. It's printed the wind pump and the tree. I can see it's now printing the bottom of the print. If I look at the print here, I can see the fuzzy bit around the print area. Remember, when you define the print size, you're defining the size of the actual canvas print area. You're adding the extra around the side here. Uh, so it's quite a hefty margin here. Here we go. And there is... one canvas print gallery wrap. Um, all I need is uh, a stretcher and away we go. Now, the ink I can see on this, it's quite shiny. It's probably still slightly damp here. That's purely because of this canvas. If you're going to be doing prints like this, think very carefully if you just go for cheap canvas as to how you're going to handle the amount of ink that goes onto the uh, media. Uh, this one looks fine. This image, one of the reasons I printed it is because it's not a heavily inked image. Um, I, I can see a bit here and that will take perhaps five, ten minutes before it's touch dry. Uh, I've noticed that with this canvas. Other canvases will dry much quicker. Of course, once I've put this together, I might varnish it and coat it and it will take on more intensity and it will look quite different. But this is the basics of printing canvas on this printer. If you've got any questions, do let me know. Um, I'm going to be doing a full written review of this printer in due course, which will have lots of details and loads more of these little videos looking at different aspects of using the printer. So there you go. Hope that was of interest. And uh, oh, please do subscribe to the channel. It is appreciated. Thanks.